Hello and welcome back to the Bad Blood Podcast. Uh, I'm Matty, Lee's pulled this sticky, so you're stuck with me the day. Um, but, uh, but over Zoom, as COVID's still in like full breach, so we're kind of doing now, studio is still shut. Uh, but we are brought here by a number of great sponsors. Spartan Bare Nuttle Fight Club, the fastest growing uh, Bare Nuttle promotion in England, if not Europe. Smashing it at the minute. Um, Mr. Bloom's Black Seed Oil Mechanics, Heathen Clothing, Scott West Shellfish, and the Governor Sports and Nutrition. Um, yeah, Bad World Podcast, we normally are combat sports and criminology. We've done criminals, we've done gangsters, we've done hard men, we've done boxers, we've done pit fighters, we've done bare nut fighters. We're going to move into some professional MMA. And uh, what better way to start them with uh, the UK's former one, number the former UK's number one flyweight and two weight class European champion, Saj Superman Higg. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good, thanks yourself. I'm not too bad. Plodding on for the COVID. How, how are you dealing with the, uh, these times that we're in? Um, just the uh, best we can. It's a bit of a nightmare situation, isn't it? Um, I think everybody has like, a different opinion on it. Everybody's dealing with it differently. And um, so I'm getting along. And, um, you know, I'm lucky I've got some good people around us that, that, that like, help us out and things like that. Yeah, brilliant. Well, mate, you've, you've fought on some massive promotions, haven't you? Bama, uh, Cage Warriors, Bait for the Cage. Am I correct in seeing them, yeah? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Also did um, Fight Nights Global as well. Brilliant. Mate, you fought all over. Uh, well, I'll, I'll like to go right back to the start, make a quick background check. So, where did you grow up? Uh, what was it like and who were the role models and influences that you had at the time? Um, I grew up in South Shields, um, England. Um, but I was born in Bangladesh. Um, but I, I've, like, I came here since I've been like two years old, so I don't really have that many memories of like my childhood in Bangladesh. But... Um, yeah, um, I think growing up, and especially like when it came to like the martial arts, I think at the start it would have been like things like Power Rangers and things. I was a big fan of those yeah. as a kid, and then um, and then Bruce Lee, Muhammad Ali, and um, those guys were. And I just love like Jackie Chan and things like that as well. Other yeah. type of martial artist <laughs> stuntmen. Brilliant. So, uh, how how old were you when you first started getting into combat sports, martial arts, stuff like that? Um, I think well. I started properly at about 14. I was, I think, 14 years old. But um, we did a little bit um, before that. Um, I, I mentioned, I think I did in, like, another podcast as well before. Um, I mentioned um, we used to do um, like boxing and back lanes and things when I was like 12, 13 years old. Weird. We got these like 10 pound like cheap um, sports direct boxing gloves. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do a little bit of boxing with mates, but this is before we knew any training. Yeah, so just, looking I'll back, be... it wasn't the most safest thing. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> But then, yeah, I started like training at like a proper club in that one, about 14 years old. Started with some kickboxing and then um, gradually transitioned to MMA. So I'm guessing you had amateur fights before you turned pro? Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah. I, I did. I started with um, the, you know, the, um, the open mat, like um, kickboxing tournaments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones yeah. where you just kind of turn up and you sign in on the day and you have a few matches. Um, so I started off with them ones um, when I was like, that was my first form of competition. Um, did them as a junior. And won a couple of them, and that kind of gives us the motivation to keep training. And then, um, and then I had a few. Um, I think I started with tie fights actually. I was like, my first type of ring fights was tie fights. Um, I did a couple of tie fights as a junior. My kicks were terrible um, when I when I used to, um, when I fought as a junior. I used to fight tie in tie fights. I just fought as a total boxer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I did that, and then. Um, and then I did one or two junior MMA fights. I can't remember how many I had now. It was, I think, it was two junior ones. And then I can remember back then, it should be called semi pro and then um, yeah, pro. Yeah. So I had a few of the semi pro fights. And then it was, I didn't turn pro till I was um, 21. Um, right. I, didn't, I didn't turn pro too early because um, I took a little bit of a gap to finish my uni studies and everything. I yeah, um, yeah. wanted to make sure I finished all that before I turned pro. So I kind of just waited it out a little bit and got some other. I did some ABA boxing matches in between that gap and things like that just to get a bit of experience um, and then turned to after I finished uni. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, so what did you do at uni? Um, I sp- um, studied sports coaching. Um, I did a um, honours degree in sports coaching. Right. Um, I was thinking my, my, my initial plan was I might have thought about doing like something like a PE teacher. But then yeah. um, once I finished studying, I thought I wanted to give my pro career a good push. I thought if I ever need to come back, I can always go back and study to become a teacher. 
Um, but just I haven't, I haven't had to go back. Up. You know, MMA's gone quite well for us, ah, um, so I've been all right. <laughs> Brilliant. So, uh, to like, while you were in like the fight that we had, me and the MMA, how supportive were your family? How how was your family's like input on it? Did the did the main yeah, my, my family have always been pretty good. Um, like when I was a kid, they were, they were fine. Obviously, you get the general like caring where they don't want you to yeah, fight yeah. and. Um, you know, it's dangerous, but they've never they've never been so like um, restrictive where they said no, you can't fight and things like that. And um, they've just always been be careful. Um, and I've had that. And I think the the better I've done in my career, the more supportive they've been. They've noticed yeah, that yeah. obviously I've taken it seriously. I'm doing it properly. Um, so I've been really fortunate um, to have a pretty supportive um, supportive family network and friends. To be fair, they've always been kind of like, helpful and supportive to all my fights. I uh, that's what you want, like me, hundred percent, definitely. Um, <laughs> Turning pro, your first pro fight, can you speak us through that? The emotions, the, oh. <laughs> the emotions beforehand. Yeah, so my first pro fight, um, I forgot the kid's name that I was initially matched with. Um, but then what happened was, um, I think it was like a week before, a couple of days beforehand, um, he pulled out. Um, and that was the, at the same, it was happening all, like there was a lot of things happening at that same time. I was also we were just moving into our, our new, like, proper gym back then because we used to train the community centre. So I did all my, like, training camp in a community centre just like a couple of days a week yeah. um, and I'd have to travel a little bit to train with a few other guys and um, so we were just like literally it was the same weekend where we did the um, sorry the, the weekend before we did like the opening of our new gym um, and my opponent that had then pulled out and I wasn't sure if I was going to get a fight and then um, I think it was like a day or two before I ended up um, Danny Welsh um, took the fight yeah. Um, and Danny Welsh, you know, he's, he's seen as a bit of a journeyman, but he's an absolute beast, really. Especially yeah. um, me being a lot smaller than him as well, because he's fought at like welterweight and everything. And um, so I, I took that fight. Um, but I, I was quite confident. I thought, you know, what it is um, you know, I, I've trained for this properly, um, so I was I was pretty confident. Um, but I just remember um, not quite. I, I felt quite experienced because I had quite a lot of amateur fights, and I felt like I'd fought like quite a lot of tough guys at amateur. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't. It wasn't that much. I didn't feel like it was that much of a big jump in terms of the the, the pro rule set. Um, but I, it was just more just that pressure. Of, like obviously, it's a bit more important now. Um, I had a bit of that feeling. But then, um, I think uh, on the day of the fight, it's just one of those things. You just it was you you're just ready to fight. And once you've done your training camp properly, you're kind of just ready to fight anybody. All I just remember going in there though. I, yeah, that's, it. that's that's kind of how I felt. I felt ready. I was fit. Um, I just remember once I got in the cage though, he was a lot stronger than I anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> so, always a case, I and I didn't realize how good um, Danny's um, his striking was. So yeah. his, his striking was like he's a, he's a really like high level Thai boxer. So I kind of thought I'd be able to take him down, but then he was strong. And I remember just the whole fight, just trying to wrestle him and get him to the floor. It was just like, it was deep, all the way to, all throughout all my um, pro fights. And that's the most tired I've ever been at the end of a fight because um, like he was so hard to take down. And um, I only won by a split decision that fight as well. It was actually a pretty close fight because um, I remember he hurt me a few times as well. Yeah, it was, actually, it was a really tough fight. Um, but yeah, that was, that was my pro debut. And I think... Having that fight as well helped me from the rest of my career a little bit because I had like a tough fight to start with. You know, yeah. when you overcome the storm a little bit early, and then I think I've um, like I said, I've never been that tired in a fight yeah. since. So it was probably best <laughs> to get it out the way away first. <laughs> Smashed it definitely. So as you journeyed on through your pro career, which one was the first big big promotion you signed for when you started fighting for? Um, Cage Warriors. Um, I fought on them straight away. And my second fight was for Cage Warriors. Smashed um, it. So. <laughs> <laughs> what was um it was again I took a short notice fight um because I'd fought Danny Welsh and then it was a little bit after that then all of a sudden um, they had there was a pullout on cage drives but the, the mad thing was it was a featherweight so the pullout yeah. was a featherweight right and bear in mind I'm, I fought a bantamweight but I'm actually a flyweight, flyweight right? yeah. so was, so the fight was at um, featherweight and um it was just one of them things where I was just talking to my coaches and they were like do I take it it's a risky fight it's a featherweight. And then um, I just thought, you know what, it's one of them fights. It, it's a massive opportunity. If I, if I win, great. If I lose, I've lost to a big guy, you know, in a top yeah. promotion. So I thought, yeah. I just looked at it as a win-win scenario. Yeah. So um, I took the fight and, um, yeah, and also I looked at the guy that I was fighting and I knew that he wasn't like a massive featherweight. Like, he, 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 I know that he could probably have cut the bantamweight. So I thought he wasn't the biggest featherweight there is. But um, I thought, I, I've got to take the shot. So I, I, I just did it. And then um, I, I won the fight, and um, that got me. And then I got the, the second shot as well at Cage Royce because obviously I won, so they brought us back. 
Nej, <laughs> what can you say to that? <laughs> now, yeah, the UK former number one and two weight class European champion. Totus for you, two uh, European championship fights first, sad. Yes, so the I fought it was for the mid for the cage title. So um, I fought Danny Misson um, for the flyweight one. Um, yes, it was a half. I defended it against Fedor. Yeah, so it was <laughs> it was Danny Misson I fought for the um, the flyweight one when I won it. Um, it was, that was an interesting fight because I'd fought Danny uh, Misson at um, at amateur as well. Oh, right. I remember, it was a it was a it was a pretty tough fight. I, I won it amateur, but it was like, I went the distance and. Um, I remember it being a pretty tough fight. He was like, he had really good grappling as well back then and when I fought him. Um, so I was a little bit, it, 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 even though I felt like I, I came further than he has, I was, I was, it was a little bit of nervousness. I was thinking, you know what it is? I fought him an amateur and, you know, he's obviously improved as well too. And then, um, so I took that fight, but again, I, I went in there pretty confident and um, I, I won that fight. Um, then the, the other one was um, Ronnie Mann. So that was, um, that was a massive fight. Um, so that was one of them big fights. I'd say it's one of the biggest fights in my career, really, um, in terms of like the biggest win. Um, you know, I don't know, you, you know, Ronnie Manzi is an absolute legend. He's yeah. fought in the biggest promotions around the world. And um, Andy, it was a weight class above mine. Um, I had loads of people saying, I'm crazy for taking this fight. I'm, you know, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I know, like, I'm jumping the gun a little bit. I'm, you know, I'm being a bit too optimistic um, to take this fight. And it was again, I, I seen that fight as one of them fights again. I was like, it's a, it's a massive opportunity to be able to fight someone like Ronnie yeah. Mann. I thought I've, I've, I've got to take it, so um, you know, spoke to my coaches and things like that. Um, came up with a game plan. I thought, right, you know, it's a winnable fight. He's a, you know, he's a really high level guy. But then um, I felt like my strength, like my speed difference, and although he's not the tallest phantom weight there is, I'm, at least I don't have that reach disadvantage as well. Um, so kind of tactically thought about it a little bit, and uh, you know, and came up with a good game plan and winning that fight. I, I still remember it. It was just like the biggest win I've had. I really believe I, I said this before. I believe I've had had that same fight on somewhere like Cage Warriors or Bama or something else. That would have been a world title. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It wasn't made for the cage, you know, really good local promotion, but um, that's the, and like national promotion. That's the only reason it wasn't classed as a world title. But um, I think that, that 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 the caliber of that fight was definitely a world title fight. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And uh, so not many people can see that they've actually went there and won it as well. Mate, yeah. yeah, you are absolutely smashing it. Yeah, yeah. Like from what I've seen as well, I, I love watching you perform. I've even had the pleasure of seeing you go like in the gym. But uh, I like you've talked to a big fighter, you've smashed them. Would you say that was the highlight of your career that fight? I'd say that was the biggest, your yeah, biggest opponent. I think, at the, yeah. especially at the time that I fought them as well. He was um, because I think shortly after me as well, he fought for the Bama World Title as well. Oh, um, nice. so I think, yeah, I think overall, yeah, I think. Overall, that was the biggest win in terms of like the the, the name I think I, I've had. Um, but I feel like a lot of my fights um, I, I've had have been really big wins. Like even when I beat uh, Martin McDonough, he was in a five fight tear. I think when I fought him, um, so Sam Creasy, I fought him. He was seven, seven undefeated um, when I fought him. So I feel like I fought other guys when like, you know all, I fought a lot of guys at the at the peak of their careers. Yeah, you know, a lot of guys fight people at, at different times. But I fought like most of the guy, guys that I fought. When they're doing that much, yeah. When they're doing their best, when they uh, hence I've been the underdog, like I'm trying 90% of my fights, uh-huh. really because the guys that I'm fighting are on a tear or something like that when I'm fighting yeah. them. So, um, I, I feel like I've had a lot of big wins. I can't disrespect any of my opponents. I think a lot of them guys, you know, they're all like amongst the best guys, um, like in, yeah. uh, at least at the time that I fought them. Um, but I think, like you say, Ronnie Mann, just from his um credentials that he's got, I'd say he's the biggest win overall. Yeah, well, not many people can do that other than Superman. Where did you get the uh, the name <laughs> Superman from? Oh, <laughs> I've said this a few. Yeah, obviously, I get asked this quite a lot. Um, so first of all, like Superman is like my like childhood little superhero. I used to love it when I was yeah, a kid. Yeah. I'd try to wrap a red um, sheet around my neck, pretend to be Superman. And <laughs> I used to love Superman as a superhero. Right? Um, but then um, it was uh, I can't remember. I, was, I forget how old I was. I was more, I think 15, 16, more like young. And um, the guys at the gym they were like having nicknames for each other and things. Um, and some of them were given like nicknames that you know then the no off. Everybody has something that relates to their nickname usually. Yeah. But then um, they just come with daft nicknames and stuff like that. And then I was like, um, I'd like to be Superman. You know, like it was just like, what do you mean? You know, you can't just have a name like Superman. You've got to earn something like that. <laughs> right? And then um, so I was like, fair enough. So I, I, they didn't let me have it there. And then um, it was when I started. Like I think who was it? I thought it was um, when I fought as amateur. It was um, I was fighting Brent Crawley. Um, and back then he was like from um, Team Roughhouse um, yeah. and he was like training with like Dan Hardy and things so he was a big upcomer then, then yeah. and um, especially like 
when I um, sorry when I when I took that fireman, um, they, it was another one of them like kind of like Ronnie Man situations, but at the amateur level, they were saying like, "Oh, you're crazy for taking that fight." You know, Frank Foley's like a you know like an upcomer. He's one of the best guys in the country and things. Yeah. Um, and it was one of them fights. So then um, I remember my coaches then. He was just saying, um, and then and, and, and the guys, if I beat Frank Crawley, then I can have the name Superman <laughs> if I prove everybody wrong. <laughs> and then obviously I, I won that fight, and then I was like, you I get my name now. Yeah, you <laughs> <it's> just, <laughs> I, see, I always fight the small. I'm always the smaller guy as well. I'm always fighting the bigger guys. Yeah. So um, I was, uh, I, think I, I think I earned that name. <laughs> yeah, you've got you've got a bunch of small guys. A bunch of small guys. Well, Shad, what would you be doing if you weren't fighting and there? Uh, Coaching stuff like that. Do you mean like if I'd never discovered uh, fighting? Yeah, you mean like yeah, yeah. Not? Well, where do you think your life would have took you? Oh, well, you know that. I always think this because before, I'd say the age of 12, I'd, I think so, before I started secondary school, I was like a total couch potato. So yeah. I used to just like play computer games. That's all I used to care about. I used to only care about the com- <laughs> playing computer games. Right? And um, and then um, it was only, I think I was like 12 years old. So I was, when I started secondary school, I remember that's when I realized actually I'm, I'm actually decent at sport. So I've, I've never really like thought myself as good at sports because um, I used to play football and things with my brother's friends. But yeah, they yeah. were all like two years older. So when you're like 10 years old and you play with kids two years older, it's a big difference. Uh, so I'm always picked last and everything. And I just assumed I was a slot and I was no good at anything. <laughs> but then when I got to like um, secondary school, I started um, like the in the you know in PE and things that the you play with your own age and you play football yeah. and things and we did races and stuff and I realized I we did like a cross country and I and I realized I was actually good at it so um I, I won it um and, and the whole year group and I thought actually I might be able because I was actually quite fat then you know I used to be like maybe <laughs> twelve stone then no, but yeah. I was I was heavier when I was like twelve yeah. years old than I, I am now imagine it. I was a little pudgy I was a little pudgy one and um. And then I realized I was actually quite good at running. So then I started like, well, when you're good at something, you start doing it. Yeah. So then I started taking up running a little bit. And then, um, so I, I was kind of in, I remember, um, what was it? I was when I got to about 12, 13, I started, because I started joining, a, um, you know, like a running club as well. Like um, it was Moncton Stadium. Um, I used to train train there. I used to do the athletics running and things. I used to do the 800 meter run. Yeah. And um, so I remember thinking, I was one of them guys, if I'm going to do something, I want to try to be the best at it. Yeah, yeah. So Very I used to do the running at, yeah, so I used to do running and say I've got very good cardio. I used to do running um, along with the um, when I then I discovered obviously the kickboxing and things then. And I think I, I, when I was about 16, 17, I was doing both of them. And I, I, I said to myself, I was like, when I turn 18, I'm gonna um, decide exactly what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I thought if I by then I wanted I want to really specialize in something. So either I specialize in my running or I specialize in my fighting. Yeah. And then by the time I got to 18, I was pretty set. I was like, I enjoy my fighting. Uh, yeah, I didn't really so... I got bored of running really. And then, um, so I think if I didn't maybe find MMA, I probably would have stuck more at running. Um, I probably would have um, found something in, in the terms of the, in, in the athletic side of things, maybe like a middle distance running. Um, yeah. So, yeah, probably that would have been what I did. I could have been a long winded answer. <laughs> yeah, could, could, could have been different for you. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Are you still actively competing at the minute, though? Yeah, d- definitely. Um, obviously, I mean, you know, obviously, I lost yeah. my last fight. Um, the good at them, but no, I definitely am. Um, I'm just sorting a few injuries out. I've had a few n- niggles and things. i um, seen a few physios. I thought I'm just kind of taking advantage of this time where everything's kind yeah, of closed a bit. Trying to fix stuff. Yeah, so I'm trying to fix a few of my injuries. Just be doing a lot of rehab on them. Um, so I'm hoping. I I was hoping to fight again quite soon after the last fight, but then um, yeah, picked up a few injuries yeah. and um, and also none, none of the shows were really running anymore. So I thought I'm. I'm hoping that at some point this year again, I definitely get a fight again. I don't want to leave that long of a gap again, um, and yeah. before I fight. Fingers crossed, and I think we're all uh, gagging for the shows in that fight. To be honest. Um. Yeah, definitely. Let we talk about Ace. How it like so, so is Ace your club? Are you the coach at uh, Ace? Yes. Yeah, so I'm the main MMA coach, and um, we've got Jordan Cooper, who does the Jiu Jitsu. Um, my brother also Sham. Um, he coaches as well. He helps out with like kind of the, the all round as well. And um, does like the kids classes as well. And then um, we've got Ubi. Don't know if you know Ubi. Um, he uh, helps with the. Do, do you know Ubi? He used to fight in the old, like way back um, years ago. I, he had a few I think fights. So, um, yeah, I think the name does ring a bell. Yeah. Yeah. So he's really good. He's um, although he hasn't fought as like um, as actively as that because he, he, um, just family commitments and things like that with with him and yeah. work stuff. Um, but um, he's always been my training partner all the time. 
Like, and I really believe like a lot of the reasons I've been successful is because I did a lot of training with him. He's my main spawn partner and for a lot of my um, training camps. There's also Navid um, that teaches there. Um, Navid and Ubi kind of like um, just teach whenever they can. They kind of cover classes for us when we need, when, when yeah. need it as well. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're the main coaches there and we're kind of all running it together. Um, I kind of lead the main MMA side of it though. Yeah. So what kind of uh, things do you offer to people? Like what kind of classes do you put on? Yeah, so we do uh, um, pretty much everything. We try to cater for, I think, cater for the uh, majority of people. Um, we've got like the kickboxing classes, the uh, BGJ classes, and the MMA classes, um, just for adults and things. We've also got like the fundamentals program for like beginners that want to kind of get into it. Yeah, yeah. I've um, seen that you've got and six I think one programs and stuff like that on, haven't you? Yeah, so we're doing that. Obviously, now we've had to change that up a little bit since um, because of uh, all the COVID yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, can't really put a proper course on. Um, so that's why we've put like a fundamentals program where people come and do like non-contact stuff. We can still teach them most of the basic stuff, and um, so then get like a head start when we're allowed to do some contact stuff. Yeah. Um, and I think where we specialize, I'd say most at the moment is our kids program. Um, gutted with this COVID stuff because I used to have like nearly thirty to forty kids in my kids classes oh, sometimes, boom. and um, <laughs> <laughs> the kids were loving it. Yeah, we we, 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 did, we, we were doing really well with our kids program. Um, but obviously now from like going to 40 kids we've had like limited down to like 12 kids in the space and things and we had to put more classes on to try to cater for it and stuff and yeah. it's been an absolute nightmare um, to try to kind of work around this so I'm really hoping we can get our numbers back up soon um, it's just because it, it was it's really sad to see because the, the kids absolutely loved it and, and knowing obviously I've got family um, kids are in my family and stuff like that and they've got nothing to do now Um and yeah. A lot of the kids are just like they just you know for kids you know a, a year for kids it feels a lot longer than it does for us. It's, it's really and you can imagine good. them, yeah, them not being able to do stuff for like almost a year now. Probably, you know, it's it's pretty sad. It is, it, but um, it is what it is. Suffering, aren't they? Definitely, I think um, I think they're the side that they're, they're suffering that people aren't seeing. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's it's really sad, but I'm hoping that if we can reopen stuff, but even when we're allowed um, to reopen with like limitations and things, but I'm always trying to push to try and get the best for the kids. Um, to, to, so that they can at least get something. I think um, I just I just hate seeing like kids not being able to have anything to do, mm-hmm. um, and just not being able to see them smile when they're training. So I've always come up with different games. We're just we're really creative at the gym. We'll come up with anything. Give us oh, something I, for the kids. I, and stuff I, like I, I we'll see stuff like out. I put on your YouTube channel all the time. It, like it, it's a good way. Of keeping <laughs> have you, a lot a lot of kids. Have you ever seen the, the beatdown? <laughs> I, I I think I'll have to watch it. It sounds good. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, to... put, I think I put on. I think they're mainly on our Instagram. Um, we, we we've done a few beat downs where the kids get a chance to like beat up one of, beat up one of the coaches. Um, <laughs> and they've got to try to show all their techniques that they've learned the best they can and stuff like that. Oh, we do loads of stuff like that. Oh, uh, it's just such a shame I've been doing it for a whole year. <laughs> oh, it's a nightmare. Um, Shad, short and sweet. Uh, it's been mint. There, uh, I will be getting the part two on with you if you help for it though. Uh, when the COVID's like finally, yeah, definitely. Through, we've got our studio back open, we can get it all nice and proper on that day. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, definitely for that. Yeah, Let me know. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us this morning, mate. It's been an absolute ple- uh, pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for having us, mate. It's been awesome. Not a problem. Uh, mate, I right, touched on everything there. Have, do you want to give any of your uh, team a shout out? Anything like that? Any sponsors? Um. At the moment, I'm like I haven't really got um any like specific sponsors. I think I still get like yeah. um sponsored by Funky Gums, um but and um oh, who is that with the the Northern Gas and Power there? Um, they they helped me out oh, in the last yeah. camp. I definitely they deserve a shout out. They they paid for all my medicals because I was struggling with that because these medicals are expensive these days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and um so they they really helped me out with with, with that stuff. So um, I would definitely like to give them a shout out. Um, but I just I just can't wait to get back in the cage and um and climb back up there. I feel like um I've been knocked back a little bit. I need to get that um number one status back. Uh a hundred percent. It will all be screaming <laughs> for you as well. Uh so we'll keep up the up the date with it. Uh you keep up us uh keep us updated with everything that's going on and uh we'll get a chat about the socials and stuff like that. Awesome. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Thank you very Cheers. much, Dad. Top man, thank you. Yeah, so that was uh, Saj Superman Hig, uh, professional MMA fighter, head coach at yes, MMA, top man. Nice to find out about the bloke, uh, and I'm sure we'll keep updated. And uh, we'll stay along his journey, see when he's fighting, and we'll push all that stuff back out to you. Um, 
Uh, bit of a nightmare that we've got to do with all that Zoom, but these are the times we're in. Uh, big shout out to Spartan BKFC, uh, Mr. Bloom's Black Seed Oil Mechanics, Ethan Cloven, Scott West Shellfish, and the Governor Sports and Nutrition. Um, I've been Matty. This has been the Bad Blood Podcast. If you like what you see, tap the subscribe button, hit the like button, and we'll see you next time. Ta-da.